Hi everybody, so I would argue in the last three to four years 3D printing has come on leaps and bounds. It's a quantum leap in terms of affordability, the quality and the speed of the actual print. But of course that does leave us still with one big problem. What is it that you print? Because if you think about it, there are only three ways to get something to 3D print. You can either model it yourself, grab something somebody else has modelled, or scan it. And to help me in that mission, Creality sent me this. It's their CR Scan Ferret Pro. And when you open the box, what you get is this nice carry case. It really is a nice case. But of course, where it is in what's inside. If we open up what's inside, have a look at that. That is the scanner head itself. And that's pretty tiny and pretty compact. So it's a nice bit of equipment. It feels sturdy. This is the first time that uh, Creality have sent me any bit of equipment but I do like the feel of the build quality. It's a nice bit of kit and tiny. So you get the scanner itself. And here is what I consider to be the core of the Creality scanner that makes it very functional. And this they're calling their wireless bridge. Now we'll come to that in a minute because I think that's really important to what Creality have created. So you've got the wireless bridge. Then we have this, which is a kind of a handle and battery, and you've got the charge section here and the power out there, and there's a little screw thread at the bottom to take this, which is the stand, and the, standard, the stand screws into the bottom of the battery to make a little tripod. So we can tripod that up if we're going to spin what it is we want to scan and have that static, or we can just fold that up and we can use it as a handle to scan from. So that's the scan base itself. Then it comes with this, which is a phone holder, an adjustable phone holder, because the Creality, and one of the things is it can be um, adapted to a huge range of things. It'll run on Mac, it'll run on Windows, it'll run on Indro Android, and it'll run on iOS, so Mac phones. So they've made it so that it can do a huge range of things. And of course, that's where you pop your phone. Then there's a shoe which goes on the top here, and that's where the actual Creality thing itself sits. So it slides on its shoe in there like that. There we go, and that's how we put it together. This bit screws onto there, like that. So that's it put together, and those are the key parts. Now, because they've done it so that it is so adaptable, of course, what they also come with is a whole bunch of cables. And to a degree, you're going to choose how you want to run this thing. This thing will run, as I say, from a Windows PC, a Mac PC, Android phone, or iPhone. But of course, an iPhone or an Android phone is not going to have the same processing power as your PC. So it will do the job, and it does a pretty good job according to reports, but it's never going to have the power of a desktop. And a lot of these times, it's really the quality of the scanner and then the processing oomph you can put behind it to get that thing done to a degree of professionalism. This capture seems to be pretty cool, actually, but the processing power for a phone, I don't think a phone's so great, but it will actually work really well on a phone. It's just that I don't think it's so great. So what I want is something that I can put onto a PC. And the reason I want to run it off a PC is because I've got this thing. It's actually a Surface Pro, which is not really a tablet. It's an incredibly powerful tablet or laptop PC. So I find this really very powerful. And I want these two to link together so I can get the processing power of the Pro along with the capture of the um, ferret. So my setup runs that way. And that's why I think this is the winner because this Wi-Fi bridge was super easy to actually um, find. I just plugged it in, pressed the button once it turned on. I went here on the settings, found the network, clicked connect and bingo. I was actually up and running. The software recognized the scanner. The scanner went straight into the software. It was so easy that that's going to be my default setup, how I actually run this thing. And to do that, of course, I really just need two cables. And here they are, these two cables here. One connects this to this, which is the one with the little screw in there. So it connects in there, screws in there, and then that connects to the battery out, which is here, and then the battery in on the side of the wireless. So that's how that sets up, and that gets it up and running really well. And of course, what I want to do now is scan Amy. 
Amy Johnson is considered to be one of the most influential women of the 20th century. She's won numerous awards, including a CBE in George V's birthday honours and the Harmon Trophy, and her, and her gypsy moth plane, Jason, is now on permanent display in the Science Museum in London. It was on January 5th, 1941, when she set up from Blackpool with orders to deliver a plane to an RAF base near Oxford. But due to adverse weather conditions, she went 100 miles off course and ended up 12 miles off the coast of Hearn Bay, and having run out of fuel, she had to exit the aircraft and was never seen again. The statue to commemorate her was commissioned by the Amy Johnson Project and created in bronze by artist Steve Melton and was unveiled at Hearn Bay in 2016. Now, because I did it on the Surface Pro, I did all of the scanning and processing in one while I was stood at the statue, but the software is really easy to get hold of. Go to the Creality website, click on the appropriate software, and you'll see the different distributions. I just used Windows, installed it, bingo, ready to go. And when you open up the screen, this is what you get. A brief tutorial you can skip through and start new scan. And you move the scanner across your object, aiming to keep the little dot on the left-hand side there at optimal distance. But it'll tell you if you move it too far or too near, and you obviously adjust for that. When you're finished, click complete. Confirm and then move to a new position and scan the next bit of the object you want to scan. That'll create your multiple scans which you have to optimise before you can merge them. So click optimise. Clean them up a bit by using the lasso and delete. Then when you're happy, click merge, highlight what you want to merge and then just click yes. It'll automatically do it. You have choices here actually, recognise it. Or you could put markers on, but once you're happy with it, click yes, and that will become your scan. Go back to the page and you'll have opportunity to clean it up some more, and from here you can export it as an STL. Now that tutorial bit I just grabbed from Creality's own page because of course I was on the seafront and didn't have opportunity to capture the screen, but I did exactly that to create this. I took six scans of Amy and then merged them all together using that merge technique to create this 3D model. Now we have our 3D STL model, we can print it. And there she is all printed off. Now I've printed this off on the Mingda Magician Pro 2 because I wanted to give that a go to see how that did. And it's actually a really nice print. Now, of course, when I did the scan, she was life size. I had to shrink her down in order to get it into an STL format that the Mingda would print because the Mingda prints up to 400 and this is 280 millimeters tall. So obviously I shrunk it down. I'll put that file, the STL file onto Thingiverse and the link is in the description should anybody want a statuette of Amy Johnson. But it is a really nice model. I'm quite pleased about that. And I found this incredibly easy to use. I mean, I did link it up to the Surface Pro, so it was particularly easy to do that processing once I'd done the scans. Not sure how it would do with the phone, but I'm told it does really well. Certainly with the Surface Pro, it made it super easy because I just scanned it, processed it over a cup of coffee, came back here and shrunk it down and printed it. Much easier than the video, in fact. It took no time at all, so I'm quite pleased with that. There we go, big and little. And it's a curious thing about English copyright law, but any public work of art is not under copyright. So feel free to scan it and print it. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.